Yo, what's up guys? It's King Sean here, and in today's video, I'll be bringing you guys my stock ups and stock downs from yesterday's win against the Giants. I'll give you guys about three to four stock ups and then three to four stock downs as well. So, if you guys are new to my channel, leave a like down below, subscribe, turn on notifications. I'm on the road to 4,000 subscribers, so if you could, hit that sub button. I'd really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. All right, so starting off with some stock ups. First off, Jaden Daniels. Jaden was really good yesterday. He had a solid game. He was 23 for 29, which is over a 70% completion percentage, 226 passing yards, no touchdowns or interceptions, but he had 10 carries for 44 yards as well. So Jaden, he did what he needed to do yesterday in the first half. He didn't look bad in the first half, but um, he did struggle a little bit. But in the second half, he looked way better. He he looked more comfortable in the pocket. He ran less. I feel like after the hit he took in the first half, he definitely ran the ball left. That was kind of his welcome to the NFL moment where, okay, these guys are more physical in the NFL. They're bigger. Obviously, if you have an open lane, then go for it. But um, just try your best to avoid contact, especially in the NFL, because contact in the NFL, obviously different compared to college much more physical guys are stronger bigger so uh, obviously jay has to watch out for that and he did in the second half um he was he looked a lot more comfortable like i said he was hitting guys over the middle of the field noah brown for example um zach Ertz as well so i really liked what i saw from Jaden yesterday his stats over his first two games 40 for 53 75.5 percent completion percentage that's third in the nfl 410 passing yards zero touchdowns zero interceptions 97.2 passer rating and then he has 26 carries, 132 rushing yards, two rushing touchdowns, and then a 0.221 EPA per play, which is fifth in the NFL among quarterbacks, and then a 51.1% success rate, which is seventh, and then a plus 13.9 total EPA, which is fifth. So, hey, man, Jaden stats are really freaking good among quarterbacks. So, he's been really good, and also, I'm pretty sure he leads rookie quarterbacks. Yeah, he leads rookie quarterbacks in passing yards, completion percentage, and passer rating. Bo Nix and Caleb Williams, they haven't been great so far, but they're all rookies, so you got to give them time to develop, and they will develop. I think, you know, Caleb, he'll be fine, and Bo Nix, he should be fine as well. But once again, it's good to see Jaden Daniels playing some really good football right now, and he's just going to get better and better each and every week. Moving on to the rest of the stock ups, our running game was super good yesterday, specifically Brian Robinson. He had a career day yesterday, 17 carries, 133 rushing yards, 7.8 yards a carry, 40 yards was his longest run, man. B-Rob was going stupid yesterday against the Giants, and I said it in my preview video that we can run the ball on the Giants. They are not great at stopping the run at all. They allowed 6.7 yards a carry against Aaron Jones last week. So we did just that. We ran the ball up their throats today. Well, not today, sorry, yesterday. And Brian Robinson, he had a career day. Austin Eckler, he was pretty good on the ground too. Eight carries, 38 yards. I think he averaged like four point some yards a carry. So pretty good. He was also good as a receiver. Three catches for 47 yards. His longest catch being 27 yards. So amen. I love our running back duo. I feel like Brian Robinson and Austin Eckler are a very underrated running back duo. You can put them up there as one of the best running back duos in the NFL, man. I feel like you, there's a couple guys better than them. Well, better than them. You could say Monty and Gibbs over with the Lions um, and a couple other guys as well. Maybe Mostert and A-Chain. But, man, b Rob and Eckler, man, they are a super good running back duo. Moving on to the other stock ups, Noah Brown, he had a really good game. Three catch, 56 yards, his longest catch being 34 yards. That was on the final drive of the game, the game-winning drive led by Jaden Daniels. It was a perfect throw to Noah Brown over the middle of the field, man. Jaden Daniels, it was a really nice throw. Hey, man, they said he couldn't throw over the middle of the field. He did it to Noah Brown on that last drive and multiple times in the game as well to Zach Ertz. And he had another one to Noah Brown earlier as well. So, hey, man, Noah Brown. He is a big help to this offense. He's going to continue to be a big help to this offense. He looked like our receiver one yesterday, and he's not a receiver one. It's Terry, but um, Terry is, I'm not sure. I think Terry should be good, but he just hasn't gone off to a great start. But back to Noah Brown, man. He was really good yesterday, and he only played 20 snaps yesterday. He was only out there for 20 times, 20 snaps. Uh, so the more he gets snaps, the more snaps he gets, then the better his production looks the more targets he will get. So, amen. 
Really excited to see what Noah Brown can do for the rest of the season. And then Zach Ertz, he had four catches for 62 yards, so he was a big target for Jaden Daniels. He and Austin Eckler are safety blankets for Daniels. Daniels targeted Zach Ertz over the middle of the field multiple times. So, hey, man, Zach Ertz, I told y'all, draft him in y'all fantasy leagues because he is going to be really good this season. He's going to get a lot of targets from Jaden Daniels. And he showed it, you know, yesterday and against the Bucks last week. He only got three targets. Well, he actually only had three catches. But, hey, man, Zach Ertz, he's going to get more and more targets. He's going to get fed more, especially in the red zone. Uh, so, really excited to see what he can do for the rest of the season. And then, final stock up, Benjamin St. Juice, man. I was pleasantly surprised by St. Juice yesterday. He had a pretty solid game. He did allow a couple catches to Malik Neighbors. But, overall, he was pretty solid. Had six tackles. Three pass deflections and a forced fumble, which really changed the tide of the game. If we didn't get that forced fumble, then there's a good chance that the Giants probably would have won that game. So, hey, man, shout out to Benjamin St. Jude's forcing that turnover. Jeremy Chen recovered the ball. Jeremy Chen didn't have a great game, which we'll get to later. But, hey, man, shout out to Benjamin St. Jude's, man, because that turnover really changed the tide of the game. So, Benjamin St. Jude's, he was good yesterday. Us fans, we give Benjamin St. Jude's a lot of crap. So, you know, it's good to see him balling out. And then just some honorable mentions real quick. Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu, they were pretty good. And then Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff was a perfect play calling yesterday, but he did call some stuff up, some really good stuff up. So, you know, um, I like some of the stuff I saw. In the red zone, we weren't great. But to be honest, there's not much when you, what you can do when you have a lot of pre-snap penalties like false starts, um, illegal formations, holdings, stuff like that, which we had a lot of yesterday, specifically false starts in the red zone. So I don't think Cliff was too bad yesterday. I just want to see him open the uh, playbook up a little bit more um, fully because it feels like we, he hasn't, but hopefully he does. I feel like he will in the next coming weeks. Now for the stock downs. I got three for you. Number one, pass rush. Absolutely terrible yesterday. We only got one sack on Daniel Jones yesterday, and that was Cleveland Farrell. Hey, man, Cleveland Farrell, two sacks, so good for him. But, man, our pass rush has been so disappointing. Well, I guess last week versus the Buccaneers, they weren't bad. Uh, we couldn't get Baker Mayfield down to the ground, but they did get pressure. But yesterday against Daniel Jones, it was bad. It was really bad. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, you guys are, I think you guys have like a combined $52 million cap hit this season. And y'all are literally doing nothing out there. I mean, it's 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 just rough, man. And at least Deron Payne, he got some pressure last week on Baker Mayfield. Actually got a good amount of pressure last week on Baker Mayfield, but... Yesterday, he didn't do anything, and Jonathan Allen, he just hasn't done anything so far this season, which is really concerning. I don't know what's good with him. We might trade him. I honestly thought we would trade him this past offseason, but we didn't. Um, I think Deron Payne, he's safe right now because he, he's in a second uh, year of his contract extension from last offseason, so I think we have an out on him next year, so if we decide to move on from him, it will probably be next year, but Jonathan Allen, we can move him right now. And I would not be surprised if we were to trade him at the trade deadline, which is week nine. I'm pretty sure November 5th, which is election day. So, hey, man, if we decide to move Jonathan Allen, that might be the date. But going back to the pass rush, they didn't do anything yesterday. And our front seven is supposed to be the strongest unit on this entire team, including the defense, obviously. And they just didn't do anything yesterday. Dorrance Armstrong, we're paying you $11 million per year. You didn't do anything, including Farrell. Um, other than the sack, he just didn't do anything. And then obviously you have the guys on the interior with Payne and Allen, as well as Mathis. Newton didn't get a lot of snaps. He only got 12 snaps. I'm guessing they just want to ease him back in um, to, you know, playing. So he didn't really do much yesterday. But man, pass rush, super disappointing. Next, Michael Davis. Michael Davis, he was getting cooked left and right by Malik Neighbors on curl routes and slants. It was bad. Michael Davis, I see why we had Noah Igbenogany in over him last week versus the Buccaneers. And Noah Igbenogany was honestly playing better. Like, when Noah Igbenogany was in the game yesterday versus the Giants, he was better than Michael Davis, in my opinion. Michael Davis, I see why we had you on the bench last week, okay? I definitely do. And then Jeremy Chin, he wasn't terrible, but he is still a stock down because he did miss multiple tackles in yesterday's game. And missed tackles, honestly, missed tackles altogether is a stock down because... It was a struggle last week against Buccaneers, um, trying to bring down Rashad White, trying to bring down Baker Mayfield. We just couldn't do it, which makes no sense. And I know with the new CBA rules and all that, it's kind of hard to practice tackling nowadays. 
But still, man, you got to bring Daniel Jones down to the ground. You got to bring guys down to the ground because if you don't, then they're just going to pick up extra yards. They can extend the play. Daniel Jones did multiple times yesterday. So you just got to bring them down to the ground. And we did not do it yesterday. We're going up against the Bengals next week. They have T. Higgins. They have Jamar Chase. So, hey, man, those are two guys that are tough to bring down. And I feel like they're going to have big games against us next week. But we shall see. Um, and that is really it for the stock downs. Um, do I have any honorable mentions? I guess Mikey Sanders still, he didn't have a great game yesterday, but he's a rookie, so I'm not too worried about him. And then the secondary, the secondary, I guess the secondary wasn't downright awful, but they just weren't great yet again. I mean, our secondary just isn't good overall, but, um, they weren't great. So that is really it it for the stock downs and that is really it for today's video hope you guys enjoyed if you did leave a like down below subscribe turn on notifications comment down below your stock ups and stock downs from yesterday's game and other than that it's been king sean and i'm out peace